And we're back. We're back. We're back. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and even everybody that's been here throughout the day, man. This has just been an amazing day. I'm excited for this next session. As you guys can kind of see, the day has worked in succession. Um, and as we start this next session, really quick, um, for everybody that's back, I know Sarah just ended her uh, listening uh, session. Just real quick, let's just do a quick check-in. How's everybody feeling? How are you feeling right now? Are you feeling joy? Are you feeling happiness, sadness, anxiety? Like, what are you feeling? Let us know what your vibe, what your energy is right now in the chat, in the chat. Um, and this next session is uh, food and nutrition. I'm excited about it because uh, we have two people that I've been wanting to work with for a while um, and haven't been able to quite figure it out, but um, they're both amazing in the food and nutrition space. And we're going to be, uh, they'll actually be going through how, you know, adopting um, different sort of regimens and dietary things and strategies that can actually influence for, for your food and nutritional intake. Um, that will influence your vibe, your mental health, and your overall well-being. So I'm excited about th this. Um, I don't know. I know it's a 20-second delay, so I know that uh, Kenny Gatewood is here. Feeling the love. Thank you, Kenny. Kenny's, Kenny's uh, coming from, what, Maryland, D.C.? Who else is in here? Let us know how you guys are feeling right now before we dive into this next session with uh, Chef Grace Ramirez and Miss Michelle Mitchum. Grace Thank you for being here. Grace is a rock star. How are, how are everybody feeling? How are you guys feeling, ladies? <sighs> it's been um, it's been some very rough. Um, I say over seventy days. I don't even know how how I I I have check ins with myself to see how I'm feeling, and I have to stay very present. So in this moment, I'm very grateful to be here with you guys and. I'm, be, I'm just grateful to be sharing the space um, to talk about something positive and to inspire you all. Uh, but it's been very, very hard. It's been very difficult. I feel like we all feel heartbroken in so many ways. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't really know how I feel deep, deep inside, but in this moment, this is, this is great. Okay. How are you feeling, Michelle? <laughs> I think I share a lot of Grace's sentiment. You know, the world is going through a really, really tough experience. Um, the vibrations are really, really, they're really volatile right now. Um, and I think that in on it's honest for everyone to feel out of sorts um, right now, a little, a little heavy um, is to be expected. And I don't think I'm any exception, I feel that way. Um, but I'm I'm grateful for my practice. I'm certainly grateful for my community. Um, I think that that's really important. We check in on each other. Um, I know that they're there. Um, they know that I'm here. Um, and I think at a time like this, that's about all. Probably all that most of us can do is mm. just um, make sure that that the ones that we love and care about know or are aware that we're here for them and we feel the same we feel their pain and we're here to hold them up and hopefully they can hold us the same so that's beautiful that's beautiful for those how are you doing Ian? right i'm good i'm grateful i'm well i'm present i'm here i'm grateful that i'm grateful for everybody being here um that's that's taking this time to invest in themselves i'm grateful for you two ladies and everybody else that's come before um that's invested their time as well and their resources and their energy to, to be a part of Creative Vibes Only Wellness as I work to continue to grow this um, into another. Oh, there was a sound issue with Sarah's sound bath. Okay. Um, or her listening session. That's unfortunate. Um, we'll figure that out for Sarah, but I'm grateful. That's unfortunate to hear. So I feel a little sadness there because Sarah's an amazing uh, teacher and practitioner. Yeah hoping everybody would get the opportunity to have that experience. That was actually the last time I saw Michelle in person it was I think at Sarah's, or maybe, uh, I think that was the last time I caught you on 125th, but I think that was <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I'm so grateful for this. That's how I feel. I'm present and I'm just soaking it all in and, and um, I'm gonna try to do my best to, to download everything. Yeah. So without further ado, I wanna shift into the session uh, with Chef Grace Ramirez and Michelle Mitchum. Um, Michelle has a bunch of letters behind them. So really quick, Michelle, what are all the letters behind your You're in the you have the like, only letters to make it seem as though I'm really important. They don't mean that much. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
But um, okay, so a little bit about you know about about myself, I guess from a professional perspective is um, I am a scientist first and foremost. So let's just start there. I'm a biologist by degree. I'm a biologist by bachelor's training. And I'm also a master's, I hold a master in public health um, with focus on community health education. So I'm also a certified community health educator through, through that. And at present, I am um, in study pursuing a doctorate of Oriental medicine or acupuncture in, in Oriental medicine as we speak. Um, so that's what all of the letters mean. Um, <laughs> it just puts some credentials, I guess, behind my feeling and my passion. Mm. My feeling my passion is, you know, is that I believe that wellness is a birthright. Mm. Um, and mm. I believe sickness is the business of wellness. And mm. I, I chose to credentialize myself heavily, as if you can tell I'm still pursuing, because I want to be able to deliver solid messaging to people um, and that they should be able to trust their instincts and trust nature first um, when it comes mm. to health and wellness and healing. I fully support um, clinical medicine. I studied, I worked in clinical health care for a long time. But I also realized the power of nature. Like I said, I'm a biologist first. And I'm a biologist naturally. Every Christmas, my gift, the gift that I was most excited about was a chemistry set, you know? Mm. I mean, it's not biology, it's chemistry, but it's yeah. science. It's true. And I would get excited about receiving the same gift every year. So all of that to say that mm. I understand the power of a lot of things in terms of as it relates to nature and um, nature's position in our lives as human beings and, and why, why we should trust it. There is a place for clinical medicine, certainly, and I support that too, but I think that it's important that everyone is empowered with enough information to trust their instincts in pursuing nature first. Amazing. I'll let, um, for, I'll just, Grace, you can introduce yourself, but I'll let you guys take it from here. Grace, introduce yourself, and you guys stay tuned in this session as Michelle and Grace uh, take you through a bunch of great strategies um, that you can adopt into your daily kitchen, your shopping, your intake, uh, as far as food and nutrition are concerned to age your wellness journey. So thank you again, ladies, thank and so Grace, thank you. feel free to introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm Chef Grace Ramirez. Um, I was a director, producer in television who worked at the Food Network and decided there was um, lack of representation in our community um, and that I wanted to change the narrative and the perspective of what it would be to be a Latina female chef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, because, I mean, this was 15 years ago, um, there was really, I mean, now, obviously, there's a lot more of us, and now, you know, we've been fortunate enough with all these TV shows, love them or hate them, um, to to have a different perspective of chefs in general, yeah. and, and, and and there are now more people, Yeah. but, and there are a lot more of us <laughs> now, which is really <laughs> exciting. <laughs> But but back then there there wasn't there was no one who looked like me and and you know I remember my former boss who was Chef Bobby Flay who's always been super supportive he goes yeah you go be the J Love cooking you go be <laughs> go change it go change it <laughs> so it was funny because that's how I was like oh you're right okay. Um, so those words, it was funny, but those words kind of really stuck with me. It was like, yeah. okay, I, I just need to um, do something. And I loved, I, I've always, you know, I come from a big family who loves food, who everything revolves around the oh. table, who we've always, um, yeah, like back in the days, you know, when Sundays was, a, everything would be discussed around the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Sundays at, at my house was, over 50 cousins and the grandmother wow. the gra yeah oh yeah I, I don't even know how my grandmother <laughs> did it honestly now that i cook i'm like that that was insane <laughs> how expensive it was 
and how generous my grandparents were. And but but it was like always like a potluck, and there was always so much food around the table oh, that it so just beautiful. Yeah, that seemed like the table was bending, and <gasps> um, that's how I grew up. So for me, that was normal. And then I, I I came to the United States. Well, I was born here, but I came back when I was older and realized that that wasn't normal. That that wasn't the case. Um, that you know, and I lived in New York, and there was a bunch of people like with that we don't have families here so I wanted to cook I wanted to 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 just and, and like you're saying it was I grew up in a household where we had an avocado tree in my backyard and oh. a mango tree in my backyard and and everything was kind of like fresh and mm -hmm. and very balanced like yeah I, and everything and now that I look back I was like that's not normal that is not how people nowadays eat mm -hmm. and, and and I realized so that I come from a big family and then I became a chef and I went I went to the French Culinary Institute here in New York mm -hmm. um, and then I went to New Zealand for four years where all I did was learn about where food came from uh, I have a couple of TV shows that I did there and a cookbook as well wow. and I taught cooking classes yeah yeah it was beautiful but it was kind of like this hunter gatherer mentality persona mm. yeah and, and persona that I write because I've always been a city girl so so I was like wow we're, especially here in New York now more and more we see farmers market and we understand yes. where food comes from a little bit but I feel like that's that's recent mm -hmm. um and when we did culinary school we had no idea where I kind of knew because I, my family's from Venezuela. And again, we had like a mango tree in the back here. We had an avocado tree. There was my, my grandmother would grow her own herbs, but, but not in depth. Like I had mm -hmm. no idea how strawberries grew mm -hmm. or that carrots come from the ground. Like yeah. I just, and, and that, that New Zealand taught me that. So I, I became really passionate about where food comes from. And now I came back to New York Five years ago, I've been in New York 15 years. I'm a New Yorker. Um, <laughs> and and now I am working with World Center Kitchen, basically. Yes, I see uh, that. And feeding, yeah. So feeding first responders and people in need. And we do over 100,000 meals a day. A day? In New York. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and you run that whole operation? 100,000? Yes. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, we're a small team, but I, I am one of the leaders of the operation. Yeah, we. I was basically the first hire, so we've we've grown the operation from five hundred people to a hundred thousand. So it all started in the in in here. I had COVID. I had COVID. Yes. But, um. Yeah, and and we could talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but I I I had COVID and I was very very ill. But I always say, you know, Chef Jose Andres and calls <laughs> and you pick up. Yeah. And he goes. And the CEO goes, oh, I'm glad you have COVID. Get it over with because you have a lot of people to feed. <laughs> so <laughs> I did. With. The audacity. Get it over with. But he gave you good, <laughs> he gave you like good, good, good karma, I should say. To, so because you he were healthy, did. you recovered. He did. And, and, and I got to say, like, those words, Michelle, carry me through and food carry me through. So yeah. which, which is our conversation, right? Um, you know, the fact that I knew I had to go feed people yeah. and be of service to my community. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to be on, very on top of this virus. And, mm -hmm. and like we were talking previously, it's like, how can I, as a chef and thank God I have, I didn't know you back then. Otherwise I would have called you. <laughs> um, but I, I reached out to friends. Yeah. yeah. To, to be like, what is going to help my immune system? Yeah. Uh, what is going to help me with this? Yeah. And it sounds like you had it covered based on what we talked about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can, you can, um, you know, introduce everyone to, to sure. how it was, it was great that I, that I, I was like, oh, great. I did that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got it. It was very intuitively. You. We did a lot of the same. I too, we, we can talk about that probably to us, yeah. but I too had COVID and we can share the things that we did naturally. I, had it, I think, before I realized what it was. It was very early oh. Um, oh, okay. when, it, when it had just happened within yeah. the country, when it just reached our borders. But we can talk about all of that and hopefully encourage people on how to care for themselves and, and prevention and should they even contract it to offer them some some support, you know. Um, 
But what I would like to, or what we both would like to, I guess, share and discuss with the community is what, you know, how to maintain your wellness, how to maintain your mood during, um, just generally, but especially during a time like this. How can you use food and, and herbs or just food and life as a catalyst for maintaining your sanity and your wellness and your, you know, maintaining healthy internal balance during a time like this. Um, and if you are participating in this experience with us, and that means more than likely you're pretty um, versed, you're aware of the role that nutrition plays in your health and health maintenance, I would say. Do you agree, Grace? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, what you, I would say what you eat, I think people are aware, also affects your mood. And what you, when you decide what you're going to eat, I would hope, I would encourage you to consider two things um, in, in determining, you know, if you're going to be moody or if you're going to be, you know, happy or good or, you know, stable. OK, um, and I would encourage people to first consider your sugar consumption. That's the very first. That's to, in my opinion, that's probably like top line of maintaining healthy, le stable levels yeah. of good vibes and and, mm -hmm. and good moods um, and things. And the reason why maintaining a healthy sugar balance is, you know, sugar does have the propensity as well as, you know, some other unhealthy fats and even some good fats to increase your serotonin levels. So sugar, however, can make you your levels do this dance and you'll find yourself up and then you'll crash and then maybe you'll have more sugar and then you go up again and then you crash again. And um, while you do experience really, you know, happy feelings in the beginning, you get a little depressed towards the end of it. And um, when you are deciding on what you would want to nourish your body with, just be mindful of the, the type of sugar you intake and the amount of sugars that you intake. Also, what I would encourage anyone to do is to work hard to maintain a, fair, a fairly healthy digestive system. Those are the two things that I think are most important in maintaining a stable internal environment, therefore in cre creating mood stability um, in your, in your body. And, and I think, and I want to, I want to, um, you know, I, I, sugar is one of those things that people are, it's, it's very kind of like, there's no one really understands what that means. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but you do have this, this peaks and it's like, it's like an adrenaline rush, right? Yes. You get it, you eat it, you get very excited and then boom. Um, and, and that's the thing, you know, carbs turn into sugar, which exactly. people don't really understand that. And, um, and that's why for me, like, I, I am like a little um, sergeant when it comes to veggies, uh, because that veggies help yes. counterbalance that, that peak. But, but back to the sugar point, like I used to love, sugar like <laughs> i love cookies and cakes and and i gotta say my my fix because i think that things have to be you have to have something for another because mm -hmm. otherwise it's really hard to just cut sugar all together yeah. right because everything has sugar exactly. well a lot of things have sugar but 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 the key or the key is go for natural sugar exactly which is less, mm -hmm. uh, of a high, like fruits like a uh, lots of fruits you know um that's a natural source of sugar mm -hmm. and you can have like a mango, you can have a banana mm -hmm. and, and, and it was still, it, it has sugar. It's just not as, because then if you have like a cake, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's not only processed and then you have the flour and, and then you have saturated the fat. You have the frosting. You have yeah. But, and, and also dark chocolate has done it for yeah. me. Like I have this much of like a 70%, and I, that's all I need. Yes. And it's just a little something that it's going to keep you going. It doesn't have that super crash yes. effect. It doesn't have um, that spike up and down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I, I, I try to always give people other something because if I say cut sugar, that's, well, you know, most people are just like, eh. but if I say, you know what, instead of that cupcake, you can have a little piece of dark chocolate. Yeah. Then that's kind of. Exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> and and what people also need to, or I try to encourage people to understand, sugar is not the enemy. Processed yeah. sugar is the enemy, and the time of day that you choose to eat any sugar can become problematic. So, in my counsel, or in even in my life, I decide to have a, my sugars and carbs at the beginning or the top of my day. They're all natural sugars for the most part because I can control it. And I allow my body at least 12 hours to burn through it. I just make sure I eat very clean and minimal carbohydrates after that, but carbohydrates are not to be avoided. They're a very important part of your nutritional process. You need them. Um, you, I would encourage, I, I mean, you just should be mindful of when you take them because as you shared, they, carbohydrates, you know, the molecular breakdown of carbs, once it gets into your body is it does turn into sugar. And if you don't burn it, it turns into energy, basically. And if you don't mm. burn it, it's going to just sit. And then tomorrow you'll put more energy on top of it and then it would sit. And then you have, you know, weight problem or obesity or some, you know, some other problematic um, health condition potentially. So... Michelle, I have a question because yeah. I think that a lot of people are having a hard time sleeping these days, right? Yeah. Um, and and I think that exactly what you're saying relates to also sleeping. So a lot of people, you will have wine, which is turns into sugar, or you would have yeah. a cake at night, or you will have all that. So what you're saying is essential. If you want to sleep well, do not have a lot of sugar at night, uh, uh, wine oh, or carbs or, right? Yeah. Because I, I, I was having that problem myself, yeah. right? Like we go, we get home from work, you know, so stressed out, yeah. everyone's trying to cope however they can. They have a glass of wine. I mean, it's fine to have one, but you have a lot. Four glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I was having four, four <laughs> glasses of wine. And then I couldn't sleep. And I was like, wait a minute. I mean, I, or I would sleep. Like I would crash, but then I would wake up like 4 a.m. Like yeah. boom, yeah. like so much energy, but it's 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and it was the sugar. It was the sugar. And you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. Um, It was a point that I was going to bring up a little later, however, but alcohol and certain fats, but certainly alcohol is not, it's a depressant. Um, So natural, yeah. and it is heavy in sugar. So if you... And it is a depressant, partially because it's heavy in sugar. And then it's also meant to be a depressant. Um, mm. But should you have, um, you just would like to, if your goal is to maintain a healthy or a elated mood or high vibrations, I should say, then you probably would not want to introduce alcohol into the process. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially during a time, you know, metaphysically during a time like this, the vibration of the yeah. planet is so desperate and it's so um it's so volatile and it's so depressed on its own, right? That I really would encourage people to not ingest or not consider depressants or any things that would probably depress your mood any further. Um, and I think alcohol is known, is actually known to be that. Um, yeah. So if we're working a million. You have a question here <laughs> for you. Uh, so Jessica Fiorella says, oh. one, what recommends okay. could you give us in maintaining healthy digestive system? Do you mean probiotics? And two, yes, on carbs, what about complex carbs? Would those work? Yes, thank you, Jessica, for bringing me back to the gut health mm -hmm. portion of, yeah. of the conversation. Yes, probiotics is a big part of it. Maintaining healthy gut flora is a huge part of main maintaining a healthy digestive system. Um, you don't always have to buy probiotics to get this, this effect. Just eat lots of green leafy vegetables all the time. But all of the good um, gut bacteria that you would need for the most part, they've done a really good, science has done a really good job of condensing them into some really great formulas now. In the very beginning, I was, I would only use plant-based, I still only use plant-based probiotics um, to supplement my life because I just don't eat enough foods to, to support my health in that way. But yes, maintaining healthy gut flora by introducing or maintain or, or incorporating um, a probiotic routine into your practice is really important. And the other thing that you can do to maintain a healthy gut is to flush it. Just 
Just flush it all the time, drink lots of water. You don't want to overhydrate yourself. We're not talking like five or six gallons, not even more than two per day, to be honest. But just, you know, you want to you want to flush your system fairly often. Allow those probiotics, allow probiotics and prebiotics by way of onions and garlics to work for your gut in healthy doses. And lastly, another way to maintain a healthy digestive system is to incorporate a, a detox that you trust every three months. It doesn't have to be seven days. It doesn't have to be 21 days. It shouldn't be any less than three days if you've done like a major one in your life every quarter. So every three to four months, do a mild system detox and that will maintain a healthy gut system like internal environment and you just want to keep it flushed um in that yeah way. i think it says do you have a recommendation or a brand for by <laughs> ashley i think probiotics um green vibrance is the one i recommend i should probably have stock in the company they probably don't realize mm -hmm. how many people i've sent to them over the course of my career but i have noticed that their prices have gone up considerably within the last couple of years i would like to think it's I probably had you <laughs> <laughs> it's probably you that you keep recommending them and then they're like oh now we're <laughs> famous <laughs> yeah so that's the one I, I recommend do you do you have a a practice in terms of how you maintain your yeah. health your gut so you know I am really spoiled because one of my best friends, uh, she makes kefir, um, kefir oh, from, uh, she makes, and then she makes it from buffalo milk. So oh, I have this beautiful oh, fresh wow. kefir, which is like a very intense yogurt. It's super delicious. sour, but I love it. Yeah, it's, it's in my fridge at all times. And so I, she's kind mm -hmm. enough to make big batches of it and gives me some because, um, yeah. I, I struggle a lot with gastritis and I, I have a lot of stomach uh, issues. I mean, now they're more under control, but she's kind enough that she makes a big enough batch that she always has a jar for me. So, oh, that's awesome. but, I, I, but I, yeah, but I think probiotics are, are great. I, I struggle with some of the pills, like they're very yeah. intense for me. Yeah. So I like to use the powder. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, I, I love I love the powder. I think it's 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 easier to digest because probiotics. I, I think they give me the same effect, and I don't know if this is a science. I'm making this up, but it's like green tea. Sometimes it's just too much, like really? because I've yeah. It's like ah. I mean, I <laughs> for me, I I struggle with green tea. I love green tea, but it has to be matcha. Yeah, I can't have I can't have the leaves. Um, they make me very nauseous. The same thing with probiotics. I don't know if that's correlated at all. <laughs> um, that's actually pretty interesting. That's that could be indication of something else to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it might be something that I, it's my body um, yeah. that that I, I. But again, I have I, I I'm also super on top of my. Um, you know, of what I eat because I struggle. Like all my stress goes to my stomach. Yeah. So. So I, you know, I, since I'm 16, I have like a stride. So if a guy is like, I have a hernia, like I have, oh so I have to be, yeah, I have to be very on top of it because otherwise it's just, I, yeah, I, I've, that's my weak spot. Yeah. <laughs> so I think also that's why I became a chef because I was like, <laughs> I feel sick all the time and this is not good. So um so what yeah I, I feel the stress in my gut all the time a lot of people especially women they do there's a whole nother conversation around why that is and and some other things that you can probably do to manage that even on a, a physical level that could help we should probably talk offline about that yeah I would yeah to. totally I, but I, but i think that like i was telling you earlier um i i i i was so before I moved to New Zealand, I, I you know, New Yorker, super stressed out on my twenties, uh, hustling. Yeah. Well, we're still hustling, but back yeah. then the hustle was even hard. more intense. So hard, hard. hard. <laughs> you know, um, being, uh, I, I didn't have my family here, so I really struggled, yeah. right? And and you know, come from from nothing. Uh, so it was a lot of stress, and 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 I. I and I was eating poorly, obviously, because I couldn't afford. Because I understand eating eating well is expensive. I understand that, and that's why I think that also we want to talk to some little things I learned along the way to to minimize the cost because mm -hmm. it was like 
it was it, it can get really pricey yes. um, to eat well. Yeah, it, it can. <laughs> so so I think that that for me it was kind of like you know uh, what how can I eat better that is budget. not just trying yeah on, on a budget exactly. Um, so that's why also I became really veggie obsessed mm -hmm. because it helps. It helps with all the gastritis. It helps with the stress because not only do they make you feel in a better mood and, and you can talk about the science of it. Um, mm -hmm. but I was like, but it, it helped with everything else. Yeah. Like you're saying, I mean, it's natural probiotics for yes. your gut. Yeah. Um, they, they make you feel more alert mm -hmm. They're You know, they make you feel less tired. You don't yes. get those peaks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, green leafy veggies are our friends and mm -hmm. I can talk about how I like to cook them, but you can talk about the, the science of it. Yeah, well, let me just suggest, and then you can tell me the recipes that I'm going to try when we get off of this that you shared with me. A little yeah. bit. But I, what I wanted to share with the community is other foods that you can use to increase or maintain healthy, stable, like great moods or attitudes would be to consume green leafy vegetables at least two helpings a day so for two meals be it your lunch and dinner your breakfast and lunch you know make sure that you have a pretty healthy at least four to six ounce portion size of some green leafy vegetable ideally broccoli and bok choy and kale and watercress is both grace and i love um yeah, they're yeah. Really, really good choices other good options well the the vitamins that you're looking for and the food choices that you would want to make are folate, B12, vitamin D, psyllium, all these psyllium, you know, and antioxidants, foods that are really high in antioxidizing properties, vitamin D, vitamin B12, and folate would be those green leafy vegetables, beans and legumes, seafoods, fresh fruits. Um, foods that I would encourage you to avoid, and I know you mentioned that your kefir is a part of this group um, because it's dairy-based, but it does serve a purpose, and that is prebiotic. But um, if you're trying to, if your goal is to to keep your mood healthy or happy, or at least not depressed, I can't say healthy or happy, but just not depressed, then you might want to avoid things or foods that, that have dairy or dairy altogether, um, foods that are processed, foods that have like vegetables, shortenings and certain cuts of meat, just, you know, things that are high in saturated fats, those are not your friends. Um, yeah, and let me say, let me say something. I can have, I, I, I'm, it's weird. Like I'm lactose intolerant, but I, when it's buffalo milk, you can milk have it from buffalo. <laughs> I can have it. Yeah. So, th so my kefir is made from buffalo milk. So that's mm -hmm. why. And 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 I gotta say, there's some amazing uh, coconut yogurts which have a lot of yeah. probiotics as yeah. well out there right now. So mm -hmm. if you're lactose intolerant and you're trying to stay away from dairy, I completely understand. But I think that for me, um, yeah, the buffalo milk has helped, and mm -hmm. and and coconut yogurts. There's mm -hmm. Anita. I love Anita's coconut yogurt. She's she's a dear friend of mine, and and, and her and her coconut yogurt is delicious. She'd be a dear friend of mine, and she can send me coconut <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> yeah. The other day, I said send me some yogurt. She was like, I can send you gallons, uh, and I was like, oh no, that would be for the team, but I just wonder for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be part of your team if she's gonna send you gallons, so I can get a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Grace, yeah. So they're asking, wait, so they're asking, what about cottage cheese or ricotta? Well, you know, those are dairy products. So if your goal is to, if your goal is to get vitamin D and nutrients, absolutely. But if you're asking if, if that's going to support, um, not being in a depressed or a low mood, then more than likely I wouldn't encourage you to have that. Now, if it's a small amount in the beginning of the day and you have all day to do, you know, other things or you're eating other things that actually raise your metabolism while you're having your yogurt or your cottage cheese or, you know, if you're having some other sort of dairy thing, then that's okay. Um, but the truth of the matter is dairy itself is a depressant <laughs> when it comes to how it reacts in your system. Um, now, mm. how you dress it up and the things that you use around it, 
you know, can make the difference as to how you're going to respond. But the truth of it is, it is a depressant. Okay. And they're asking us, um, oh, first they said, yes, yeah, skin care, both beautiful. Oh, you, you both have beautiful skin. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and, you so and we much. can talk about that. And then it ties on to the next question um, because it says about creating balance, right? Yes. And, and I think that that's very, it's very important. Anything that you take on mm -hmm. for it to, man, to have longevity, yeah, and for you not to have be like, because we we love to take on these diets, right? Yes. That are like two seconds, and then yeah. you're bored, you're tired, and you're like, okay, I'm done. And I think that that um, I, I I used to have a lot of acne um, myself, and, and I think it was also because of stress and eating too much dairy. Um, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I I uh, I was not eating properly, and I do think I went to a lot of dermatologists, and I do think that. Uh, the probiotics, the, the um, drinking enough water, hydrating yourself enough. Yeah. Like saying, um, I, I I think it's a combination for me. I don't know what it is for you, but I do. Um, and like I drink water, I drink this all day, and and then I get creative with it. I put lemon, mm -hmm. uh, lemon. It's like I literally squeeze um, in the morning. I have a really intense lemonade with my uh, with I'm crazy, but it's like my lemon has has garlic and it has ginger and it and it has turmeric at that as when i wake up that's, that's what i do and um that's great it's been warm and it's and, I, and I, for me it's also helped me with my gastritis yes. um so i have that and then i have the lemons that i squeeze i put them in the freezer and then i use those in my water like like if there are little ice cubes yeah. and then i put chia seeds in here yes. and again more ginger so i think that uh, enough water yes hydration really helps me hydration i uh, also collagen for me has really changed my skin really? um yeah i i owed it to everything since i it's either by the form of bone broth, like yes, I drink that way. You know, I thought you meant yeah. to supplement collagen. No, okay, no bo bone broth. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know, for those who don't know, uh, bone broth is a lot of collagen in there, um, and it's either I buy it or I make it, and I literally either throw fish bones and and have, but I always have some sort of bone broth yeah. being made from fish or being made from from um, different bones of beef or turkey, chicken. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that that also has really helped my, my, my the skin. Routine. Um, yeah, it sounds like. Yeah, it. yeah, and, and I don't, keeping obviously keeping it clean. Um, <laughs> so, you know, yeah, because you know, when you're younger, you're just like, ah, oh, I don't even need to wash my skin. But yeah, you, you kind of get older and you need to be a little bit on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> My um, coconut I, oil, coconut oil also really helps me. Yes, coconut oil is this been a miracle in my life forever. Um, but I would Ever. like to, I, I don't, okay, I'll just, I think maybe my routine has a lot to do with what people think of my skin. I don't think I always think it's nice skin, you know, but people seem to compliment it. And I do think that, um, it's because of what I do like you every day, which is um, my routine. I drink, I drink a lot of water. I absolutely juice every single morning. So my, my, my health, my wellness routine every day, my ritual every day is this. I wake up, I drink 12 to 16 ounces of water that is not infused with anything. Because when you infuse your water with anything, even you know the slightest, pepper, a peppermint leaf, a lemon slice, that changes the whole constitution of what your cells has to do to the water. I mm -hmm. my goal is to just allow my cells to absorb the water and flush and use what it needs and flush out the rest. Now, if I incorporate lemon or um, mint or anything else for flavor, my cells then have to respond to working with whatever the properties of lemon is first and then deal with the water. And more, most often than not, a lot of the water would probably, not all of it, but some of it probably won't be absorbed, right? So I think mm. maximum absorption, I just choose to use just water first. I'm flushing out my digestive system, to be honest. I'm allowing my liver 
to um, to flush through all the impurities that it's been working through overnight. Um, and then after that, I make a juice. It's not always green in color, but it's green in that it's fresh. Um, it's usually cucumbers, the base, which is high in collagen and it's extremely hydrating. So that is something that I use every day. So I also use collagen every day um, via my mm. cucumber. Yeah. Um, and then I'll sweeten with maybe a pear or um, pineapple, sometimes apples, but not so often. And um, I'll have a probiotic with that, kale and ginger. That's the staple juice that I have every day. And then, you know, I go about and do other things like I'll have two boiled eggs and um, maybe some, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so, so they're asking, uh, I've been eating for pro protein for breakfast. What is a good breakfast protein? A good protein diet for breakfast or a good breakfast protein period? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're asking, yeah. What are good breakfast proteins? Eggs. <laughs> eggs are the only If you have some that you would offer because I'm only the nutritionist by like all of that, but I'm not a chef. And I really need chefs in my in my um, arsenal because a lot of people want me to guide them on things, on how to make things and things that they should should use. And that's where I think your area of expertise and passion works because for me, it's always eggs as my protein in the morning. Yeah, it, me too. I, I really like having, you know, t very simple, especially because I'm always in a hurry, but, mm -hmm. but I like you, I like, especially lately that I'm so stressed out about work and that, what's happening in New York and we're literally distributing a hundred thousand meals a day. I like you, I have juice that I do beets. So it's beets, um, beets and carrots and ginger. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that it's just, that's my, so it's either I have my, and then I have literally bone broth, like I have tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. So that, that switches my morning. And then I think that also is because it helps me not be so hungry throughout yeah. the day. If I, yeah. if I load my morning with a lot of carbs, um, then, then I'm starving. But if I, if I have like, yeah, I, 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 that's just me. Like, because I have a very fast metabolism. So if I load it, then I'm hungry. But if I have like my, my, a bone broth and then I have like I have like three hard boiled eggs. Uh -huh. um, morning. So I'm like I'm snacking on my hard boiled eggs and 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 then if if I have time I have I have like yuca bread but that it's um it's like cassava. It's really we, good though. Cassava. Yeah it. it's really good because it's pure fiber. Yeah. Really do that on like avocado. Mm -hmm. So I yeah avo toast doesn't have toast yeah. it's like cassava bread and then I put it, I put avocado on top and then I, I put my hard boiled egg chopped on top. And that's, that's a great, delicious. Dish. that's a great one. Yeah. It's delicious. And I think that also I've become good at first. It was really hard for me to make that transition of adding greens in the morning, but mm -hmm. now I love it. Now I can have watercress. Like I, or I make myself a really quick omelet and I have lots of watercress, which I quickly dress up with just olive oil, lemon juice, salt. That's it. I just get a good quality flaky sea salt because that yeah. is going to excite me. That's going to give you a crunch. Can um, I actually stop you there and ask them to pay attention to that watercress recipe? <laughs> because yeah. That's a really great and beautiful and simple way to prepare watercress. It's my favorite thing. And I think you said it was yours too. And it's really important in maintaining like a really stable mood. It's high in antioxidants. It's, it's good for all the things that we talked about. Yeah, watercress, I think move over kale, here comes watercress. Uh, I grew up with watercress, so I, I love the taste. Uh, also, you can make like instead of a pesto, you can yeah. make a pesto from watercress. You know, you can substitute uh, parsley for mm -hmm. watercress. And I think that it's, yeah, it's 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 like the new superfood. It's always been the new food, right. but, uh, but I think that it's so great. Um, and again, it's part of that green leafy vegetable, but it has mm -hmm. texture. Like, I love the water texture, and so I love the bread that it has, and, and I love how vibrant it is. Yeah. But also, you're saying it, it, it does go bad very quickly, but what you can do here is, um, and, and this can happen with like, for example, I love these guys, um, they're called, um, 
their farm one and their hydroponic farm here in New York. I, I want to support them because they're struggling. And now yeah. they ask, what can I do with, um, you know, what can be done with like microgreens? But, mm -hmm. but let's say it's regular parsley or let's just watercress. Mm -hmm. And anytime it's going bad, you can just put it in the blender with or chop it finely mm -hmm. with olive oil, salt, mm -hmm. and then that's, freeze it. So I put it in ice in my ice cube trays. I wish I could make it for you, but I, I, I thought we weren't going to have time. But like, put it on the ice cube trays and then freeze it. And then as mm -hmm. you want it, you go. And and now, for example, pasta. We were talking about sugars, right? Mm -hmm. I love pasta. I'm a pasta addict. So I had to come up with a solution. So kale, kale noodles, and you can talk a little. Kelp noodles, sorry. Kelp noodles are amazing. Mm -hmm. And Oh, God, I want some of those. Yeah. So if you have like these kelp noodles and you literally have that beautiful pesto sauce, you can throw it in, throw some sardines in there. Oh omega. My God. So we got it covered. Omega threes, antioxidants, iodine, all the good stuff. Yes. In that so I make it. So I'll make it on the other session the the um the little my little pesto. Oh, absolutely. Nice. And and yes, so and then I, I can send the recipe to you all, but basically all you need when you're making uh -huh, in the breakout session. Yeah. So in the breakout <laughs> session, I would definitely prepare um, the pesto because it's super simple and I want everyone to see it. And, and you, I want you to see how I literally freeze it in, in ice cube trays. So it's going to do all you need. And if you want to get ready for it, it's olive oil, um, salt, and parsley if you have basil if you have uh but any kind of herbs works like mm -hmm. right herby green leafy herbies i it's like a like a chimichurri has parsley and then you we have something in venezuela called wasacaca that is more cilantro based nice. but it's really any kind of like herby sauce that you could just throw on top of anything basically because yeah. if you're making chicken you can put it on top if you're making fish you can put it on top of that or if you're making a pasta you can put it on nice top of that. I'm interested and I'm excited to try. <laughs> I'm very excited for this kind of recipe. So, you know, because I collect a lot of herbs. I have a small apartment, but I won't show it, show you, but it's like a little forest in here. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is at this time, it's just me here. And so a lot of it goes bad. And I have didn't really implement that practice um, that you suggested with the watercress and some of the other herbs where you can just blend it up and freeze it and use it for another time instead of tossing it because they're really flavorful and they have really good properties. And I, I have them for a reason. It's a shame to just have them, you know, go bad and I can't use them. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And I want to say also roasting veggies, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I feel like these days, um, people are used to boiling vegetables, right? And, 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 roast all veggies um it's it's so good to have a, an oven at over 350 degrees and then the only trick about roasting vegetables is two things broccoli like roasted broccoli is delicious any roasting butternut squash roast sweet potatoes even with the skin on uh so i i roast all my veggies um pretty mm. much or or i or if it's bok choy, for example, I steam it on this. And this, everyone should have a little steamer like this because um, there's like the bok choy for three minutes and then just olive oil, salt and pepper um, and lemon juice and it's delicious. So I think that the trick about roasting vegetables is the following. Basil, parsley, cilantro going bad fast. Love rosemary mint lasting a little more. Yeah, so basil, you can do like a basil, uh, parsley, right, and do a pesto, and with the cilantro, what I like to do is literally chop it finely, give it a little bit of a, of of heat, like not overly saute it, but just get some olive oil mm -hmm. in the pan, put the cilantro, and then put a flaky sea salt, and then put that in a jar and use it for whatever you want. Oh, that sounds delish. Frito base, it's like a sofrito base. So, um, oh wow. Yeah, and then and then if you want, you can you can also put mint. The only thing about mint is it's very overpowering. But you can have. I like to have a, a little bit of other um, 
sauces, like I have little jars of sauces. Mm -hmm. And for example, for me, rosemary and mint and parsley go beautiful together. Mm -hmm. So you can make like a chimichurri, but that has rosemary and, and mint and olive oil, salt. And if you like chili flakes, you can add chili flakes. If you don't, you don't. But but all these things can be kept in little jars and they last for a very long time. So yeah, don't toss don't toss herbs. Thank just you. just turn them into something else. And, and and same thing you can do, you know, it's a very Spanish thing to get parsley as well. And you the thing is you have to put the olive oil in very low heat. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting if you're getting your your olive oil and you want to saute those herbs, just put very low heat, chop your herbs, low heat, and just wait a little bit. Don't turn the heat up because then you'll burn them. Mm -hmm. So you want to preserve their integrity, you want to preserve the freshness, but you want to stop them from going bad. So that's mm -hmm. how that that process happens. And same thing when you put and when you put enough acid in there, and and if you don't, if you want to do it fresh, if you put if you put acid like lemon juice mm -hmm. and olive oil, that stops them from going bad. That was my next question. Could I use fresh? Did I have to apply heat to store the to prepare? You don't. I could. They could be fresh with just lemon, a little lemon juice. Yeah, okay. lemon juice and olive oil. Okay. Yes. Because yeah, a acidity prevents oxidation. Always. Mm -hmm. That's why we always put in our guacamole or in av anything avocado oh. related, uh, lemon juice, because the acid will pre will prevent anything from oxidizing. So that's why you do want to get uh, lemon juice Perfect. in there. Great, because uh, thank you. I needed that tip because I would have done it all wrong if you didn't tell me that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, but also, but but we also have to think of pestos. Like mm -hmm. pestos, if you if you get it fresh and you freeze it, that again, freezing stops the process of yeah. of going bad. So you yeah. you're fine. You don't need. But if you want to leave them out and if you if you want to have more flexibility, um, just add. You can you can also add a vinegar, right? If yeah. you like. I just I love the. I, I love limes and lemons are my best friends. Um, <laughs> so and it's just because it feels really fresh and it feels. Um, you know, even if it's frozen, whatever, you just put it in and you're like, oh, great. This is amazing. I, I feel like, but again, anything acid. So we're talking yeah. about vinegars and you can do a champagne vinegar. You can do an apple cider vinegar or whatever vinegar you have at home. It's 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 fine as well. Awesome. And someone's asking, what about turmeric for inflammation? Because well, How do yeah. you feel about turmeric? Yeah, turmeric works for inflammation. Um, you know, I, it's a, it's, it's an herb that's been used over centuries in many different cultures for many different reasons. And yes, it certainly has its most popular property in this society is its anti-inflammatory property. So yes, um, turmeric works really well for that. I think, however, though, we're coming close to the end of our time and I wanted yeah. to, to share if it's okay. Um, I wanted to leave two takeaways with the community on what they could do um, on a, just, you know, incorporate into the everyday routine and hopefully it becomes a part of their habits to maintain like um, pretty stable, good moods, good energy. Um, the first I would say is to remember to hydrate yourself. I would encourage you to incorporate the practice, sim a similar practice to what I employ, um, early morning hydration to flush out things and get your, your cells full of water and to to trigger or to ignite your metabolism. That's what I, I would encourage you to hydrate first thing in the morning. Um, and if you can't, if you don't remember to do it first thing in the morning, just be mindful and do it um, and try your best to, to get at least 64 ounces of water a day. Um, lastly, I think a good takeaway to maintain a healthy mood and great energy level is to Incorporate ginger if your diet allows you to. If your doctor says that it's okay for you to have it, because there are some people that ginger probably may not, they probably shouldn't have it. Um, and that's a very small and specific group. Um, but if your doctor says it's okay for you to have ginger, I would encourage you to, to incorporate it every day into your process. If you're a juicer like myself, or if you're a tea drinker like some others, or if you're neither and you just need it then figure it out and add it to your life that's my that's what i would like to share yeah and roast your veggies i've heard say so it's 350 degrees make sure you don't over crown your vegetables because if you over crown them what it creates is steam 
and then you're basically boiling them as opposed to roasting them. So you wanna lay them out on a sheet tray that they're nice and spread apart, coating them with olive, with oil, olive oil, just coat them gently, right? You don't need to go crazy with the oil, but just coat them gently because that oil is what's gonna make sure you caramelize it. Mm -hmm. So all those sugars get activated and you get that beautiful golden brown. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they get a little charred, it, it's gonna only bring like a little bit of smoke and caramelization and and it's gonna basically, it's a party. It's a vegetable <laughs> party. Yeah, it needs to be, the oven needs to be preheated. Ve veggies need to be coated in oil, nice and fine salt so that the vegetable is gonna absorb that mm -hmm. salt. And then you finish off with a, a flakier salt, but just make sure they're nicely coated with a, a, a you know, a, a fine salt and pepper, yes. freshly grounded. That's the best. And then, yeah, just roast them. Oh, that's good. I can't wait. Yeah. That. This is amazing. Thank you, ladies. Peggy, Peggy Anderson said, uh, Michelle, is raw ginger okay? Yeah, raw ginger is okay. Like as I suggested, if you're if you're um, if you are in the community, like many of us that can tolerate ginger, you know, there are certain groups of people who can't. Then yes, raw ginger to me is the best. I, it's really good. I use raw gingers for my juices, but I I use dry ginger for my teas. If that makes sense. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And one 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 thing I didn't answer does does that cilantro oil salt mixture need to be refrigerated? Safe to leave in the counter. It's safe to leave in the counter. Okay. Good <laughs> so that that's coming from uh, one of the Knox docs who's in our next session. She's an endocannabinologist. Okay. Yes. Hi, um, Dr. Rachel Knox. I see. Rachel and Hi. your sisters. Um, we should have brought the brother. Rachel and Justin. Brother, the brother's a lawyer, from what I'm told. So the family practices together. It's going to be a great session. Love it. Awesome. We, Can't uh, wait. Dr. Knox did a great job uh, last month when we did 420. Is there anything else, Grace, as far as takeaways? I know you're going to be doing a, a small demo later um, after we finish the, the last session next. Uh, any other things you guys kind of like parting words as far as like, you know, diet and nutrition contributing to your overall vibe and your mental health? I think I... I think I, my, my suggestions on hydration and foods that would keep your metabolism active would certainly encourage a pretty good mood. Um, if you incorporate those two things every day, you might realize that you might not feel as, as crappy about things as much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that we need to, um, it, it, it's especially, I mean, now these days are very unique because a lot of people are in quarantine and a lot of people are not leaving their homes at all. But I think meal prepping is it's essential. Like have those veggies. Like for example, I always have in my fridge just asparagus, roasted asparagus, roasted uh, sweet potatoes, roasted, because those are my snacks. I think that, that we really crash when we're snacking and we're just anxious, especially these days, we get really anxious and we just go to the fridge and eat whatever. So try to make really conscious choices when it comes to what what are you what are you choosing to buy first in the yeah. supermarket? Because if you are making poor choices when you're at the supermarket, then you're gonna it, it's all a, a ripple effect. It's all it's all gonna trickle down. But if you make more conscious choices into what are you really purchasing, um, and get excited, get excited about veggies, get excited about green leafy veggies, and 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 trying to trying to be creative, right? Like for example, for me, a big deal was swapping, yeah, the, the, the pasta for kelp noodles. And, and don't get me wrong, I think that everything in life should be balanced. And once a week I will have a, a beautiful bowl of pasta. I have no, nothing against that. I think that actually I need it for my, <laughs> for my mental health, but, but just try to make more of those good choices. So I always say it's like, for me, it's like an 80-20. I make really good choices 80% of the time and 20% of the time. So I just go, uh, I'm going to have that pizza. Even <laughs> though it's not great, I'm going to crash, but I need it. <laughs> at least at least once a week or once a month, I do have pizza. Um, you're and, mind, and, you're similar to being mindful. You're mindful about your eating and, and giving your, yeah. judging yourself whenever you're doing something. I think that that's a big yeah. part. Yeah, I, I, I try to be really I try to be really good eighty percent of the time, but there are stuff twenty percent where I allow myself to eat okay. whatever I feel like it. Good, good, good. I'm so grateful for both of you. This was Thank so great. much. Thank you. We switched it up too because I know we had a, a a structure the last couple sessions, so it was great to just kind of have you guys freestyle and 
uh, everybody that's here partake in it. And I can personally share my own journey on on just diet and nutrition. I've been plant based for almost three years now, and um, I do have I have like eighty twenty moments as well, Grace. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> added sugars are hard to cut. Um, there's a lot yeah. of it's it's not a, it's not a challenging lifestyle, but yeah, I'm so grateful for all of this. Yeah. If there's any questions that weren't answered, um, I know Grace has a session um, uh, expo later. Maybe Michelle could hop yeah. in that and you guys could tandem on that and answer some questions uh, live after Grace does sure. uh, one of her demos or her her sure. recipe. Michelle, I know you're you you're the Orange Moon, and yes. where, else, where can we find you online? Yes, yes, yes. You could find my website. I'm going to add it to the chat, but um, I also have a, a health and wellness practice here in New York. I've had it. It's five, six years old. It's the Orange Moon, and my website is the orangemoon.com, and I'm also on Instagram at at the Orange Moon. Oh, perfect. I'm going to, I'm going to follow you right now. Grace, Grace, where can we find you, Grace, when you're not, when you're not making food for a hundred thousand people a day? I know a hundred thousand people. Wow. So no, no, bad. we have many wonder. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I mean, I've, I've worked with this organization for many years now and, and uh, when we were in the Bahamas, I cooked 10,000 meals a day and that's as much as I go daily. Um, so but no, now we have, it, it's insane, but no, we have wonderful, my job these days is mainly um, uh, coordinating logistics and operations, and 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 really making sure we are hiring the right, uh, you know, yeah. alliances between small restaurants and vendors and caterers. So we, I, 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 there's a lot that goes behind. No, I couldn't, I couldn't be cooking that myself. We have wonderful partners. Okay. Um, but I'm Chef Grace Ramirez. At Chef Instagram. Grace Ramirez, and then do you have a yeah. site? Well, they yes, can, Chef they can Grace Ramirez. Everything, everything is Chef Grace Ramirez. <laughs> yeah, I, I Chef Ramirez. Yeah.